Hey, this is Max at 343 Labs. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, John Selway, which is taken from 343 TV, which is right here on our channel several days per week. Now, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, the link in the description, which is our new producer hub where you can meet other producers, get free content, collaborate, and get feedback on your music. Enjoy the clip. Let's take a look at it. There it is, in the, hiding in the corner. Got my Luma keying on so you can see all the black stuff's getting replaced by the, the trippy video synth in the background. But this is Tombola. And I didn't realize this. Um, you know, this was one of, someone posted in the chat a list of different devices. Uh, thank you for those of you who gave the suggestions last time. And this was one of them. And I looked it up and the first thing that came up was like Teenage Engineering OP1 has this exact same thing built into it. And I, I wonder, I don't know if this is a, a Max for Live version of that or vice versa, but it's a cool, interesting uh, sequence generator that uses some physics elements. And we've seen that before. We've seen some kind of physics oriented Max for Live devices. Um, and I, I love the concept of, of using sort of natural, physical, real world uh, ideas in generative uh, sequencing and sound design and stuff like that. I love physical modeling synthesis and all that. Um, you know, where you've got algorithms mimicking real world things. And this isn't super realistic. And, you know, it's kind of right now we've got zero gravity, right? You can see there's this hexagon, this rotating hexagon. Um, we have control over the, the shape of that hexagon in terms of we can change the angle of each of those sides. And I just messed it all up. And now you can see these little balls are bouncing around. If they touch the walls, they bounce. Let's make this a little bigger. And this will just go on forever right now because I've got... The speed is... It's not exactly zero. It's almost zero. It's not stopping. Let's close this up again so we don't lose any. If you open up gaps here, the, the, the balls, little balls can actually escape. They can actually escape. <laughs> that was accidentally beautiful. Right, so we've got zero gravity. They're just slowly floating around within this space in the hexagon and they bounce off the walls. You know, and if they're moving fast and they hit hard, you get higher velocity. Right, and that's when it gets loud, and of course, what it, the sound that you play with it matters, right? If this is spitting out notes, note on to note off, and velocity, uh, those have to be assigned to interesting things, especially velocity, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll look at what the sound is doing in operator in a second, but um, we've got high mass, right? So these, I think. Actually, I got to remember how this scale is. Like, let's see what happens if we bring the mass down. What changes? I think they're getting... I think it's actually inverse. I think this is actually heavier. They won't move as much when this mass control is lower. Let's increase the gravity and see what happens. Right? They're falling. Right? So you can see when there's zero gravity, they kind of just float there. And if I increase the gravity, they're all just going to sit on the bottom. And then now you can see they're kind of rolling around. It's so fun to play with this. And this, uh, it's all MIDI, right? It's just processing MIDI notes that I've played. Um, you need to be careful about which notes you play. Because, you know, the notes that you play from a keyboard or in a MIDI clip, you know, they need to be in a certain key or scale or what harmony that you choose, right? And then it's going to use those notes in the sequence. It's not generating new MIDI notes necessarily. You could also, like, we could stick some MIDI uh, processing before or after this. Uh, I'm keeping it simple for right now. It's just a few notes I played on the keyboard and now... Tumble is doing its thing. 
And it's amazing because it's sort of endless. As long as those balls keep moving and touching each other or the the walls of the hexagon, it keeps playing. So it just does this endless, varied droning kind of thing. Now, if I were to speed this up, make the move around faster and get more action higher, low, we're going to hear more melody stuff happening. Let's see. Let's see what happens if I increase the speed. William Mind Readers is asking, where is the list? If you check out the chat for last week's show, you're going to have to kind of go through and watch it again. But there's a few people uh, typed in some uh, names of Max for Live devices to, to check out. And this is the one that I picked. Now that, that you can hear now it's like a little more high energy now, right? It's the more it's moving. Some of the melodic variation you're hearing is actually not MIDI. I'm gonna, as I said, you, you know, when the balls move around, sometimes they're higher velocity, sometimes they're lower velocity, and it's sending that MIDI information out. And one of my favorite little tricks to do with operator is the uh, velocity to oscillator tuning, and that can be quantized, which makes the, it makes it stick to just the coarse tuning, right? And the coarse tuning in an FM synth is ratio, right? So it's it's doing a harmonic series. So we're not just hearing different notes playing, we're hearing harmonics of those notes above them, depending or below, depending on what the velocity is doing to control the tuning. I'm gonna, let's, let's see what happens if I turn this off. I'm gonna be zero velocity. Right now you're hearing fewer higher notes, right? So those higher notes that we were hearing were actually higher velocity uh, messages coming out of the, the, the generator, the sequencer, and then tuning the, the, the oscillators higher, but following along that harmonic series. It's a really nice little, uh, there we go. Now we got it back. Let's let some of those little balls escape, shall we? It's pretty dense right now. There's a lot of overlapping notes. Then we got three notes. I listen to this all day, I tell you. Right now, because we're um, we've got fewer notes overlapping, we're using fewer voices. We're hearing longer sustained notes coming out of the operator, and we're hearing some movement in the sound. The modulator in this sound is real simple. It's just two, two oscillators, a modulator and a carrier, and one of them is a sawtooth wave, so it's a little more brighter and buzzier than it would be. And, right, and occasionally you're going to hear swells as notes are, are playing longer. But I also have an LFO. If you occasionally hear it go out of tune or get a little noisier kind of wobbly, it's uh, the LFO changing the tuning of the modulator. Let's exaggerate that. There it goes. This is pretty crazy. And then I also have, you know, there's a little bit of filtering going on here, so it's not too bright.
Occasionally you'll hear a surprising note. <laughs> so yeah, I really, you know, I really like this thing. It's deceptively, it, like it looks so simple, but d depending on what you play it into, I think it, that really matters. You can't, it's not gonna, it's gotta be with the right sound that sounds good with this sort of arrhythmic jumble, this cluster of notes kind of retriggering or overlapping. Let's see, let's see, uh, I forget what key I played. What note am I playing? Maybe we'll get a surprise. I just added a few notes, just a few, uh, I played a C, a D, and a G. It's so peaceful. And of course, you know, putting a huge reverb on this makes all the difference. Like, I mean, if I turn that off, it's still nice. It's kind of more up close and precious sounding, but with the reverb, you know, I'd rather be in space with this, I think. Okay. I told you it was chill out Saturday, and no lie, we are totally chill. That said, though, we probably want to have some other kind of musical ideas going on. Let's play a little bit. I've got... All right, cross your fingers. I'm gonna, I mentioned the, the plucky guitar thing that I, that I had. It's, I've got some you know, beat repeat on it to chop it up and make it kind of glitchy sounding. Cross your fingers that it's going to be in key with whatever the tombola sequence is doing. a different key but who cares it's not terribly out of key it's still pleasant enough right and this is literally just a guitar loop out of the uh, the live library but, you know, I quantized it so that the transients would be tight on the, on, the, on the grid. So the rhythm would be tight because of running it. I was running it through this beat repeat. And sometimes it would chop the notes off and it was a little messy. So I, uh, quantizing the audio helped it work with the beat repeat slicing better. I'm going to turn off the timbola for a second. I got going on here? Do I even remember? All right, some EQ. I have a modulating uh, morphing filter here and the auto filter just to give it some tonal kind of variation. I've got it compressed a lot. Those transients are really sharp. I mean, you know, maybe even a limiter would have been good because the plucks are really bright. And then that's going into the beat repeat. And the I just set the beat repeat to gate mode, so we're only hearing the chopped up audio now, none of the dry. That's kind of nice too. Alright, so let's play around with the offset a little bit. You can hear different transients getting caught, different little slices, different sections of the, the loop. It's being pitched down seven semitones, so it's creating a melodic harmonic variation from the notes coming in, from the sound coming in. And, I mean, this is nothing new, beat repeat, but it's, I think it's perennial. It's like, there's so many slicing, glitchy, crazy tools out there. This one is simple and easy to use and, and does one thing very well. I like tools like that. What it doesn't have is, L uh, filter modulation, so I added a Max for Live LFO to sweep this bandpass up and down so that the slices are kind of, you know, getting brighter and darker. Let's slow that down a little bit. Alright, now in insert mode, we're switching between the dry and the, s the sliced audio.
How we doing? It's almost halfway through. It's different. I feel so different keeping it low pressure. Kind of easy going today. More space in between thoughts. It's kind of like meditating making music like this. I really... I don't know. After, after the class this week, when I was doing this, I felt so nice and chilled out. And I'm like, I need to do this more. And then I thought, hey, let's do it together today on uh, normally Techno Saturdays, right? It's uh, Sleepy's Ambient Saturdays today. Back in the 90s, in Windows, in Windows, 90, Windows 95 era, the, 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 the Microsoft Word uh, autocorrect, would, if you typed in Cellway, it would correct it to Sleepy. So there's some... There's some history there with, with the concept of, of, of today's show. All right. Let's bring in another part. So one of the other things we were doing in class was some basic uh, sample-based synthesis, just learning how to build up. A synth sound, but using samples, right? So that's what's going on in this part. We were going over how to use live sampler, just the basics of sampling, the concept of like a root key and, you know, which MIDI node is playing the sample and how it's in tune or not and how to tune samples, layering samples, and then getting into doing subtractive synthesis and simple modulation of the samples. How to set up your loops, right? So pretty straightforward stuff. And sort of this, some of the secret sauce in this one, and this is another thing I love to do, in terms of sort of basic synthesis concepts is, and, and sampling is audio rate modulation, FM modulation of samples, right? It's just like doing FM synthesis, except in, instead of a couple of sine waves, I've got a sine wave and a sample. And they need to be in tune or else it gets real noisy, or maybe you want that on purpose. But the kind of metallic, buzzy swell that comes up is this uh, sine wave FM oscillator. If I turn that off, it's still a good sound, right? You know, there's a little pluck and some kind of modulating low frequencies that are in one of the samples. And then there's, there's a little shakery sound that's actually a chick cicada, it's an insect. You can hear it sounds kind of, when it's faster and higher, it's more identifiable. But then add the FM oscillator in there. And there's that extra interesting detail and it gets a little rough around the edges and broken, broken in an interesting way. Let's bring that back in together with the guitar. Let's see if we can get the... Uh, Tombola to play nicely together with what we've going on here. All right, I'm going to let all the balls escape. That was a little surprising there. So yeah, increasing the mass, it's actually making them lighter. You can see they bounce higher. It's getting a little weirder now, isn't it? And you can hear the LFO detuning the modulator. It got noisy and weird there for a second. I like that. I'm gonna lose the guitar plugs.
also have a nice simple filtered FM, I'm sorry, filtered uh, sawtooth wave on this other simpler here. So I can add in some low drones I can play along. This could be a whole live set. If I bring it into enough parts into this, I could just go back and forth between different layers and perform for hours probably. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, link in the description below. And that is our new producer hub where you can find free content, collaborate with other musicians, get feedback on your music, and just meet a community of like-minded artists and producers. See you next time.